our third report, third quarterly report on um, the review that we're undertaking on non-rateable properties. So we've got 10,500 approximately non-rateable properties and we, we're, we are reviewing those to make sure that the treatment is correct within the rating, um, the rating Act. So you can see a table on there of where we're at for new councillors' benefit um, as to where we're at. We've got 10,500 non-rateable properties. We've actually given initial review to nearly 9,000 of those mm -hmm. and um, we've confirmed that 6,582 are correct. 14 have been made rateable as a result. Um, we've got 2,335 that require more investigation. So, for example, if we're um, reviewing an Auckland Council park and we can see that it's just got a park and a playground, it's non-rateable, but if we can see that it's got different types of buildings on it that require more inf in, um, investigation, it will be put onto that list. Um, further down the report, you can see where we're at since the last report. Uh, so we're, we're chugging through it. And the reason why it's going to take us till February 2018 is that those more detailed investigations do take a bit more time. Happy to take any questions. Dr. Quack, yeah, thank, thank you. Um, um, I was interested in uh, the uh, uh, one of the uh, rate exempt uh, are the institutions providing free maintenance or relief of persons in need. Um, so, can you give an example of what those places may be and how much? revenue we do we forego by not rating those? I don't actually know how much revenue we forego because they, they always have been non-rateable. Yeah. An example would be if, um, uh, for example, uh, a place that took homeless people in and they don't so charge them any on, money. Up on Hobson Street, the city mission would come under that uh, category? I, I would imagine so, yeah. yeah. So, in fact, council it could be argued, of course, that is already providing uh, a considerable uh, hand up um, for that. And I know the mayor wants to provide another half a million dollars for the homeless. Uh, I think we should uh, make sure that when we talk about how much we provide for the homeless, perhaps we would include that uh, well, if that was a rateable uh, proposition. Just, that's a comment to, not to you, Deborah, but to, uh, <laughs> to, the, to the councillors. That, you know, we do, you know, we do make a, a, a fair contribution already in terms of uh, foregoing uh, rates by uh, not rating those kind of properties. We're, we're much more generous to religious institutions, Jesus. schools and other things, Dick. They probably add up to a whole lot more in the wider picture. Oh, Mr Mayor, I didn't want to get into a debate with you on this. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, thank, thank you, you Councillor Cracks, for pointing that out. Sure. You're welcome. Councillor <laughs> <laughs> Fletcher. Oh, thank you. Uh, Deborah, really interesting, comprehensive piece of work. Can you give me some indication going forward, the former council did quite a lot of work around the sustainability of sports and sporting clubs. Um, when you're talking in here on page, uh, what number are we? Um, you're talking about the lease agreements with sports clubs that might need to be reviewed separately. What kind of weighting are you giving those clubs um, because of the volunteer component and the need to try and keep them strong going forward? Can you? Can you just dissect that a little bit further? Well, through the chair, we, we, have, um, we have some legacy remission policies that I believe are due to be reviewed shortly that um, they would probably qualify for. Games and sports, um, properties that are used for games and sports also get a 50% non-rateable component as well. Um, so. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing we're looking for. And another category I just um, wondered whether you'd like to comment on briefly, and that's of heritage. That's the biggest one. Um, so her heritage properties, um, if, they, if they qualify for non-rateability, then, then they would be, but otherwise there's no uh, further Has relief to the rating. Has there been any work undertaken by officers looking at that? 
I'm not 100% sure that will be the financial policy people. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Before I take council cases, so just notice that the uh, recommendations up there, there's nothing sinister about it. We've just made them a bit uh, more explanatory. So instead of receiving the report, so just notice that. Councillor Casey. I was just reading the wee comment about the Destiny Church in the notes on the local board. My question really is how we define worship or religion under the Local Government Rating Act. <laughs> Through the chair, it's if, if the, it's if that specific portion of the property is used for worship and it's generally is only used on a Sunday for worship. Oh, no, 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 my question was what, how do you define worship or religion? Um, our, our value is make a judgment call that the property is used for worship. Is that defend or define? The mere residence, residence <laughs> where he can have worship. If you get worship, to, does that include <laughs> you as a religion? <laughs> the mayor's house is actually uh, oh, non rateable. Uh, I wish. <laughs> yeah. I think so that Deborah it should be defined rather than mm, defend. Yeah. Define. Yeah. So a property is not defined as used for religious purposes just because somebody says it's used for religious purposes. It has to be owned and used by a, an organisation who would be seen as a religious organisation. And how is that defined, that religious organisation defined? It's whether they have don't an archbishop or not. I don't think it's defined uh, in the legislation any further than that. Uh, There's a lot of finished groups here. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Exceptions. Anyway, <laughs> so we've also asked for some work. I, I raised the question the other day about jetties. So understanding. So could you just explain to us why jetties are exempt? Um, so jetties are only. They're slightly different from the, the properties in this report. Jetties are um, not non-rateable under the Rating Act. If there is a title and they're therefore valued, then they are rated. So it's only if there is no certificate of title, no instrument, and then we can't rate them. So they're slightly different from what we're reviewing So if here. a private person builds it, they have to declare it a title for it when they apply for a consent for it? Um, it, it it's, yeah, if a building consent is issued and it, is, it, and is, um, and it has a certificate of title so attached, then yes. Oh. The, it should also be noted that if a jetty has been built at the end of a property, then um, it's probably taken into account somewhat in the valuation that it's next to a property and has access to a jetty. So, I thought there was something relating to we can't rate over water. Is that? Is that That's correct. That's if there's no certificate of title. So, for example, that doesn't count for the Hilton Hotel, which is over water. <laughs> it does have a certificate of title. What about if Mayor Goff's got a jetty down at... Um, it's not... <laughs> I'd, I'd <laughs> have to have every a, point. I'd, oh, OK. I'd have to have a foreshore first, but I'm, I'm 60 metres up, so it doesn't help. Yeah. OK. Well, Councillor Sayers. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Just uh, a follow-on question from um, Councillor Quacks and the, com the constructive comments of the Mayor around, uh, what did we call them, uh, persons of needs properties there. Um, I was just wondering, uh, through the Chair, if I could just get... The, I know they're not rateable, but the number of properties in Auckland that fall into that category, is that possible? Sure, yeah, I can look that up for you. All right, thank you. Councillor Holtz. Just supporting my colleague, Councillor Casey, I think some of the churches that receive this status are questionable, and I think particularly if their status as charitable organisations are removed, I think we possibly need to review them. No names mentioned, but I think we need to cast a pretty good eye over them. When they have ATM machines inside, them. Machines inside them, we do wonder. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and you can just pass back that. Of course we are. That is also something local boards can assist with um, because they have their eyes closer to the ground than we do and they are aware what is purportedly a church and isn't a church, or et cetera. So. That is always helpful back to the team. Not just a church either, a Sioux. Councillor Taipo. <coughs> Push. Uh, so, uh, just on that conversation about uh, churches and the like, a place of Karakia. Uh, does that include Murray? No, they're not included in this review. 
No, but in terms of the definition of the, of the facility, <coughs> why, why wouldn't they? I guess my question is, do they apply to the criteria that has just been referred to about a place of worship, church? Here you go. There's two. There's two. <laughs> Uh, through the chair, um, Barai have a separate exclusion, so they are already exempt from rates. They're already classes yeah, on rates. Just thought I'd ask. <laughs> no, don't draw attention to it. Just mate. one. Yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> just about this one more stuff. Did you say we should look at certain buildings on Barai? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Is it 50%? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, oh, raising. Oh, oh. Sorry, Councillor Fletcher. Um, Mr. Chairman. This might sound a little bit provocative, but have any of our officers ever considered doing uh, an assessment if we allowed for rating on, which we can't, but if there was rating on Ministry of Education properties, Department of Conservation, Health, those areas for which central government is responsible, do we know what that would actually, in a global kind of figure, do we have any idea of what that would be? Through the chair, no, we don't at the moment. We, we have Andrew. been in consultation with um, Solgum on a report on whether whether or not they should be reviewed. Because Lee we, Andrews you know, we agonise um, over our relationship with central government and their failure to carry uh, the degree of responsibility for funding. But you know, I think it would be interesting to know that. If Andrew, you've got more information, it would be helpful. I'm pretty sure we have done it. I just can't remember what the number is at the moment. Oh. Aaron's not volunteering it, but we can certainly we have we have done something like that, and we can give you we can give you an estimate based on something we did within the last two years. That'd be very helpful. Thank you. But I think we've got no hope. It's a bit like GST. <coughs> Councillor Casey, just just having a discussion about Scientology. What what if it's a <laughs> oh god oh. <laughs> what if it's not got a religious base? But it's a belief system. Uh, and it has premises. All belief systems. That's not a no. belief system. It's commercial activities. It's back to how do you rate to the Scientologists, for example? Uh, uh, through the chair, I don't know if we've got any Scientologists, have we? Yes, yes, we, we, do, we do. They've got the old White Cliff okay. building. It's where the fortune is. We're currently the reviewing yeah. the, the religious organisations as we speak. So um, we have issued a letter oh, to all of the religious organisations and ask them to confirm what portions of their properties are used for what purpose. Um, so once we receive that back from the Scientologists, I'll let you know. what if you don't worship <coughs> anything? What if it's a belief system that doesn't include worship? Because you've got worship as part of the act. Worship Ron Hubbard. Not sure. You might, well, you might want to note that one down, though, because that one is a little bit controversial and, and, and arguably... But check with legal. legal. It's Scientology. <laughs> Councillor Quacks, yeah. last question on it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, that, Deborah, the question that I wanted to ask was, um, I'm in terms of uh, a, a building that's used for religious purposes, is the whole building uh, non-rateable, or is it only the part of worship? Because most churches, for example, have offices, they might have, they might have a, uh, uh, some of them have preschools. So it's only the part of worship, Yep. That's considered to be unrateable. Non -rateable. Through the chair, yes, that's what we're um, reviewing now. So we've asked for the portions. So yes, it's only the part that's used for worship. Because that would well, not just apply schools. to churches, obviously. That would apply to educational institutions, health institutions, all those others that are currently unrateable. And that would be a huge if we were to do that. Determine what part was non rateable and what part was rateable, that would be a huge bureaucratic so uh, exercise, wouldn't it? We, uh, we are on You're under not that contemplating that? You're not contemplating that, or do we do that now? Yes, we do do that now. We do do that now. So, for example, university campuses where they've got cafes and shops, right. and they, they are separated out and, oh, yeah, and, and rated. Yeah. So a cafe within within a uh, within a within a uh, health the motion. We are going to. So there's a little bit of light levity in this subject. It's, I think it's actually li it's lifted everyone's spirits a little no. bit. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's worship. Thank you, Yeah. So. Um, oh, I 
Yeah. One last thing. So sanitarium don't pay tax, but they pay rates. Would that be correct? Yeah. True? Correct. <laughs> uh, san sanitarium. Okay. Right, we have a move and a second. All those in favour, say aye. 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 You? Right, Andrew. All right. Item number 15. Thank you, Deborah. Jesus, man. It's pretty good.